Hey there, this is Tim from Twice Circled, and welcome to episode 29 of the official Big Pharma video blog. This is the third episode in a series that I'm recording in the run-up to the release of the marketing and malpractice expansion for Big Pharma. In the last episode, we had a look at booster effects and trials. Uh, we also had a little look at fudging the results of a trial and even using uh, some, giving some gifts to doctors, uh, running the risk of bad publicity, uh, but for uh, short-term <laughs> gains in terms of sales rating. We'll see if that uh, comes to bite us in the uh, butt. In this episode, I'm going to try to make some really cool big production lines. I'm going to try to show off internal socket connections, a very popular addition I, I imagine this is going to be, and also stock gates, which are something I kind of wanted to add because I just think you can do silly cool stuff with them. How how practical they are to use in, in uh, reality, mm, who knows, but they are a lot of fun and hey, this is a game, it's all meant to be about having fun anyway. So in this episode, I've, been, I've done a couple of things um, already with off, off camera not not a huge amount in fact I meant to do this here so I'm gonna cancel lobbying and we're going to get specialist processing instead actually because I want to show you I want to make something with the chromatograph a little later we get in the autoclave which we're going to need in our next line and we're getting the stock gate very soon uh, in the meantime what we're going to do is we're going to create some anti-malarial uh, uh, production lines because that demand is getting pretty high no one else is making it yet uh, and this is just to make some extra money um, and you know I'm just gonna get on with it because this one isn't an especially uh, I, I, I there's not really a great uh, opportunity here to use the new features uh, for this particular where I am in the moment in the game like the best thing to do right now is just to make a load of malaria medicine just while I'm waiting for my autoclave and for my uh, chromatograph um, so we're just planning a few steps in advance, but fingers crossed we'll still be able to cover those things before the end of this episode. So I'm going to start off by upgrading this to a... I can't remember what it's called again. Antibiotic, I believe. And then we're going to mix this together. So we need to get our triangle catalyst has non-drowsy. Uh, non-drowsy is used in relaxants, but this isn't going to be a relaxant, so we don't really care. So we just need to uh, find a nice way to multi-mix these two. Uh, my latest thing with multi-mixes is actually to have a crossroad on the output side. I don't know why, but it kind of seems to work better. Uh, I'm not sure if this will work here that well, whether we should just go for kind of standard. Where, where should we cross over? Um, it's a little inconvenient. Yeah, I think maybe we could go for the the crossover on the uh, alternate side. Let me just work out how this is going to go. Yeah, this might be a bit bulky. Let's give this a go. So uh, we're going to go for that. We'll go here and here. And then what we're going to do, I like to also leave a little bit of a runway. It just it reduces the chance that there's issues. And then we're actually going to cross over twice. Now it's really important to do your crossover um, in... It's got to be half speed when you do your crossovers otherwise oh not fun. enough money let's get alone mm, this one looks fine if if we join these two together and then cross over then it's not going to work um in fact this crossover no this isn't going to work because this is actually at full speed um this was a terrible idea okay let me just start again i'm getting too too ahead of myself that was really bad. Oh, you know what we could do? We could use internal transfer really stupidly. Okay, okay, that's a cool idea. So what we're going to do, uh, there is literally no point of doing internal transfer here because we might as well uh, just import a second lot. Um, okay, we're gonna see if we can do it with crossovers. Um, uh, how can we make this work? So, maybe we'll do it more like down here. It's just gonna be difficult to get the So, hmm, this one could easily go to here. How do we get, we just need to get there. All right, yeah, yeah, no, that works. All right, that's that's pretty good. Although, like I said, I do try to make my crossovers one away um, from the input. Will that break? 
let's just give it a go. I'm going to I'm going to risk it. It doesn't always happen. It just it really does depend on the exact circumstances. It's the timing of everything. Um, let's go for that. And then, man, I probably wasted loads of space here, haven't I? In fact, yeah, in fa well, this, look. There we go. Now I get the best of both worlds. We saved a little bit of space. And, um, and what do we have to do next? Okay, let's run this. Uh, the base will have to be, um, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's fine, I believe. And what comes out is this orange one. That's perfect. We just need to run it for a couple of cryogenic condensers. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll go straight. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? Um, something like that. I'm a little rusty. Oh, what's this? Now, I know what this means. You, don't, you guys don't know what this means. Uh, this is a bad publicity event. So, I'll just remind you what we did last week. We rather rashly decided to disqualify, even though this was actually a perfectly good trial. You know, this was actually quite a good trial. We, it's actually quite a good drug anyway. But we disqualified a few results to really, really maximise our sales bonus. Uh, and we've also been... Um, we're not anymore, but we were... Ah, there we go. I think there were, there's a little... <laughs> there we go. I just spoiled it. Look. So, um, bad publicity. Uh, we, what we did is, with our anti-seizure, we, we were using gifts. We were giving gifts to the doctors to encourage them to sell our product. I actually changed that. I'll show you what I've changed that to now. Um, but what's happened is a journalist has uncovered that we gave gifts to doctors to increase sales of this product. Uh, and they published a story with the following effect, minus 7% sales rating. Now, this isn't great because the gifts, we're no longer even given the gifts anymore, so we're no longer getting that plus 20%. Uh, so that, that negative 7% is just um, permanent. Now, what we do have is this plus 24% from cross-promotion. This is a really interesting one, I think. So cross-promotion gives you plus 4% sales for this and all other cross-promoted products. It, it's got the potential to be incredibly powerful, uh, this particular one. You only get it once you unlock advertising, uh, which is a kind of second tier uh, technology. You get advertising after globalization. Now, the reason that we're getting plus 24% is we've actually got all six of our executives assigned to cross promotion. If we take one of these guys out, then, well, obviously this goes down by the whole lot, but actually all the rest go down to 20 from 24. Let me show you that again. Now they're at 24. So with cross-promotion, you really have to go, you know, double down on it. This is less compatible with, with things like when you want to start running trials, because that takes up two of your guys for a few months. Uh, and if you want to spread your things around, say you want to do research pres portfolio presentations or branding or some of these late game things. But if you're happy to really, uh, like I say, go down, double down on... on uh, on cross promotion then it can be really really powerful um, and we're currently spreading it across all these products and that we've got like all these S ratings and stuff um, the only issue is actually with this one here it's actually a pretty good product but unfortunately there's just so much competition here uh, let's just reduce our uh, the amount we're charging because we, we've got loads of stock here so it's just mad uh, and these are probably okay um, eases migraine oh dear that's not good we what happened? Gosh, I don't know what happened. So the others started producing stuff. I didn't actually notice them doing that. Hopefully that will sort it out. We also, this is actually 1-1. One, one, so this should be fine, but we, we need to sell a little bit more than we're making because we've got quite a lot of stock there. Uh, and this is probably fine. All right, let's go back to work. So. A competitor has released a gosh. new product. Uh, there's the pregnancy shield. And then we've got the stock gate. Okay, I'll show you the stock gate shortly. Uh, we'll just finish off this one. So then we need to go... Let's go for that. Slight miss design. Uh, and then we'll just go for that. Um, because this is actually the perfect place because we don't really want this. This is a bad side effect, breathing difficulties. Um, so that's fine. To be honest, we don't really want to cure people with malaria anyway because that will only reduce demand. Mwahahaha. Okay, and I think it, it includes some side effects. Yeah, let's definitely put this through the creamer. Um, 
you know what, let's really minimise the extra space this is taken up. We might be able to make a second one if, if, I mean, this is big. This is stupidly big. Look how much belts I've got. It's only got like one, two, three, four, five, like six machines. And it's just huge. I could have designed that a hell of a lot better, I'm sure. Um, yeah, rubbish design. Uh, we probably could fit another one in here, but we're probably not going to be able to. Given that we've got internal transfer, though, we could probably get most of it done and then just finish it off somewhere else. So I'm going to do that while I'm here. You know, let's just make absolutely sure that this is, yeah, that's fine, that anti malaria. Okay, so let's just do this, and then we're going to have some fun with the stock gate. Okay, so we're going to import another, so it's cold symptoms. And we're going to go ionizer, agglomerator. You have released a new and then we need to do our mix, which we did pretty awfully last time. Embarrassingly bad. Um, of course, we do actually need to mix this with something else. So, yeah, this is never going to work, is it? I'm being crazy. Uh, we've only got two sockets here. Uh, it's not really much point of even starting anything here. Screw this. All right. So, we've got this antimalarial. To be honest, we can probably charge loads because there's hella demand for this. I mean, look at this. We're only... We're selling one a day, and it's you know it's got a capacity for seven a, seven a day, so we can probably like put thirty percent on. Bear in mind that you know there isn't a lot. You know you can't. Oh gosh, that's actually no. A we can't charge nearly that much. A new there we go. Uh, but yeah, but do notice that it's only making us one hundred and twenty a day, so nowhere near as our, our anti seizure drug. Uh, so that's the thing with the malaria, you do have to let the demand get pretty damn high before it's um, it's worth it. Um, you know, you could sell a lot of that. I mean, the interesting thing is, yeah, look, if we weren't charging 12%, once, charging a premium, right? Yes, it is a way of making a bit of extra money uh, when there's lots of demand for stuff. But it's actually quite inefficient, and I've deliberately designed it to be quite inefficient in the underlying mechanics. Because uh, really what you should be doing, well, you know, if you want to make lots of money out of this, is we should just be making lots of this product. So, you know, oh, wow, it's actually it's making quite a good amount of profit now. But um, say this is making us 150 a day or something like that, then, um, actually, no, we can, sorry, we can charge that. Then, you know, we could, the difference between the anti-malarial and the anti-seizure is this anti-seizure is like maxed out on demand at the moment, whereas the anti-malarial, there's loads of extra capacity there. So what we need to do is just have a very efficient process and just make lots and lots of it. Uh, because actually charging a high price very quickly will stunt. I mean, you've got to bear in mind this is an anti-malarial. The people who need this, just they just can't afford it. You know, the vast majority of the people. You know, the people we're selling it to here, these are rich Westerners who are going on holiday uh, to places where uh, mosquitoes have malaria. You know, this w this price is way out of the the amount that a, a kind of a native sufferer a of the country could could afford. Right, so more bad publicity. Uh, oh dear, a journalist has uncovered that you disqualified valid results in a trial for this product. They have published a story with the following result, minus sales, eight. Now this is interesting because our clinical trial was worth plus 36. So actually we came out on top. I cannot remember if we hadn't disqualified these three what this value would have been. Maybe it was like more like 25. So overall we've actually done ever so slightly better by go at taking the risk, but bear in mind, Disqualifying three results, it's theoretically possible, although quite slim, that you could actually get your product banned outright. So that was a huge risk we were taking for no damn reason. Um, and that could have, e and or we could have just had a much worse effect from the bad publicity. Minus 8%, not too bad. All right, well, let's just keep the game going because really what I'm looking to do is I want to get this autoclave um, for my next trick. Uh, let's just see what else a we can do. Oh, let's product. unlock social media. Now, let's, let's... Okay, we're currently using lots of cross-promotion, but we might be able to do something else here. Uh, uh, this is probably not such a good... We, we can't really use it here. There's just not enough demand. Um, I mean, we could we could use social media to get a really big boost on our anti-malarial, because the way social media works is it gives you an increased sales rating based on average daily demand. So, um, 
you know, we could make loads of this stuff and then get a huge boost with social media. Oops. I love the... Sorry, just knocked the mic there. I love the idea of a social media campaign like, buy our anti-malarial drugs. Um, I, I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, I think right now I'm just going to stick where I am. I'm just trying to work out what the next... You know, I really need a... I do need to sort out uh, these issues with this hyperthyroidism being maxed out. To be honest, basically, there's just not enough demand for this one, even though we've actually got quite a good rating. It's quite a good drug, quite a good rating. We hop to the Cures tab, what we can actually do is click on this, and we can hover over them, and we can see that we've got an S rating, including marketing, and they've got a B plus rating. So actually, there's not a huge difference between those two. You know, if this was a D, we'd be doing a lot better. New we, ingredient discovered. we are getting a slight slice bigger than them, you know, 66 to 33. In fact, we're doubling their sales. But... Um, what's really interesting about this new system is that it's all comparative and so it's not just the total amount that someone's flooding the market with you know people used to get frustrated with that in the base game because it felt like it was out of your control well here it's all relative you we are we are selling twice as much as this person because their drug is not as good as ours or well it's not being marketed as well as ours let's just check this so we've got a, another painkiller Ooh, stroke. Now that was what I was going to go for next. That's quite annoying. We'll still go for it because it will be interesting. Uh, acid reflux. Okay, let's have a little look here. We need to get this. I'm just going to fire these guys because if you're going for a high volume sort of um, build strategy, then it's 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 fair enough to, to build up upgrade points. But I'm not going for that. So um, it's better for me to fire these guys because I, I didn't plan ahead. I should really have already started researching the the, the sub-zero training what are we going for we're just going for money okay so we don't need to look for a specific ingredient now i'm still looking to get my uh, autoclave there we go almost done that's fine let's just whiz this on a competitor has released a new product all right and let's assign these new guys we probably will go for lobbying could get sub-zero training um, they've gone for angina release relief. Sorry, have we got angina? No, we we haven't got anything to do with the blood group actually. We did just unlock the stomach group, I believe. Acid reflux, digestion. Huh. Uh, okay. So actually, there's it was, it was a high demand for alleviate stomach ulcers actually. So we could go for that one. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is I actually want to make stroke medication and I'm pretty sure we needed the autoclave for that that's why I was holding out for that we're gonna just um, yeah and what I want to show you is stock gates okay um, I think this is probably a mm, is this a, no yeah this is a bad place to try and do it this is a bad place to try and do it what we're looking for is a place with um, a couple of extra yeah let's go for here all right so Let's make this into an ionizer. Uh, sorry, an ionizer into an angina medication. Wait, Tim, you're just so bad at designing production lines. I'm sure this is by far the most um, rubbish way of doing this. Um, there we go. That's nicer. Um down to six. Oh, this is actually going to be a really bad angina, expensive angina medication because we started on the wrong side of the hypertension uh, concentration bar. <sighs> do we buy this? No, I don't think we do. I think we need to save our money, unfortunately. So we are going to, this is going to be a little bit more, you know, take up more space than it would otherwise. But we're going to just save our money because we do have a loan to repay. Um... We're going to leave that free, just in case. We might need it later as to do a transfer. Okay. Now we need to get this up to 9, so we'll have a... Agglomerator. Now, we're going to... Split. And we're going to take this one off here. You're not going to move. No, I thought it would move if it was just one. That's interesting. Um, that's fine. Uh, what's this? It... We'll put this for a creamer. What's that? Oh, cool. We get the chromatograph. And then we can start fighting cancer. Yeah. Um, no. Creamer. 
Oh, that'll work, actually. Oh, yeah, that's actually sexy. That is nice. Okay, so what's this? What's the big deal? We're just making angina medication. Well, why did we leave this split here? Oh, yeah, that's why it didn't work. Sorry, of course, it, it's only if you it's connected to both sides that it'll go across a, a T-junction. Well, we're actually going to use Stockgate here, and we're going to... on In this direction, we're just going to carry on. Um, and we're going to go up to 9 using an agglomerator. We have to leave this one empty for our stock gate. In fact, product. we can do that. Alright. And then we can go through double autoclave. Again, we're going to leave a gap here in case we need it. Um, what is the best way of doing this? I mean, my favourite autoclave setup is the one where you cross over. But I think actually in this circumstance it might be better just to do it like this. It kind of depends what's next. Um, yeah, we could double here. We need to get up to... Yeah, I think actually the best thing to do here... Yeah, no, we do need we need to join them up again, unfortunately, straight away. Um, so we do have a load of kind of wasted space there on the belts. Do that. And then we're going to go through double cryogenic condenser. Because uh, I think that's a little bit... A little bit more space efficient. Oh, I don't know. We are going to have to buy another one of these. It's interesting, like, having the belts, how much it kind of pads everything out. Um, you know, this is the size of a Hadron Collider. Uh, so just in case I went, did that too fast, uh, what we did is we, we joined them together. We went up three to seven. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Wait, to upgrade this. Oh, we don't have the chromatograph yet. Ah, oh, mistakes were made. Okay, I was looking at the concentration to upgrade it, whereas I should have been looking at the active strength concentration, maximum, no, the active range, which is 10. So, sorry, we didn't need to do this. Okay. Um, we could double, and then... Hmm, how nicely would that fit together? Hmm. So we could, we could evaporate her and then go through the doubler or we could just go through um, we could just go through two agglomerators it's slightly cheaper I think no it won't, oh, it's slightly cheaper to go to join evaporate and then do double this um, but no it's not, not with these upgrades, ah no that is just not worth it screw it, double agglomerator I mean I have been prioritizing uh, ionizer agglomerator upgrades since the beginning uh okay cool so now we got that uh, we could make a good drug do we even have the analyzer we do have the analyzer should we make this good nah let's not bother let's just make it let's just use the creamer all right uh i guess we'll go down here now this isn't the best line because for using stock gates on because unfortunately i've got a lot of extra belts that I don't really want. In fact, yeah, it's actually really worth not having all of those. Let's bring this down to here uh, and see if we can see if we can kind of make this a bit smaller. Uh, because you, you'll see why in a second. It really is worth it. Um, Alright. That is uh, significantly smaller so what we call the belts in a production line we call that the inertia of the production line it's how many uh, drugs are needed uh, within um, it's, it's how many drugs need to be kind of carried along the production line um, need to sit on on the production line before like one will come back out so the inertia of this part of our production line is basically how long it takes a change here to affect us kind of at the, at the socket and why that's important for a stock gate is because the stock gates are based on the stock numbers that are quoted on your company tab so what you'll see is for our angina we're actually selling plenty of this that's fine um, but when we start selling this stroke medication what we might find is that there's not quite enough demand um, let's find it here we go there's only a demand of 1.2 and um, a lot of it's being taken up by them, but it is worth, you know, 498, which is not bad money, especially as we didn't have to do any combining. Uh, currently, let's just speed this along and have a little look at it, and I'll show you what the kind of nominal profit is. 
we're looking at 226. So anything that we do sell is going to be really good profit. Um, okay. Now, what we do is we have these two stock, stock gates. And what we do is we set this stock gate. You have released a new Oops. Product. Oh, let's do it again because it's just released. A competitor has released Stroke a new away. Product. <laughs> uh, and what we do is we say that when this has a stock of, we need to look at the inertia here. So kind of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, about 20. Let's call it 25. It's really important to get this inertia right because um, what will happen is this will, when it goes greater than 25, the stock, Oh no, this will line open when, no, line open when it's less than 25, and then this one will say line is open when greater than 25. So now what will happen is when the stock reaches 25, this will switch and that will go to closed. Um, and in fact, we probably don't need quite as much inertia because then at that point, quite such a high rate, because at that point, the, st the stock that's already sitting on the line will still go out and we'll keep pushing that stock higher. But when it comes back down again, we want to make sure that we don't overshoot too far and actually run out of stock. You know, let's 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 go for 15. 15 will probably be fine. OK, I'll sh let's sh see that in, in action. Now, now this is set up, I could just go off and leave it. Um, and you'll see that this is now making it at full. Wait, this isn't making it at full speed. Why isn't this making it at full speed? Oh no, it wasn't. It is. It is. It's just that we've only just look at like now it's making it at full speed because we've sent the entire route through. Oh, and did you see it happen? Um, the stock went above 16, and so it switched over. And now this remaining stock will go through, and you'll see that this stock will still keep changing. But in the meantime, we're just making angina medication. All right, and then at some point, the stock stops going through, and this will start going down again. Right, we're selling it slowly, slowly, and then let's just go down to normal speed so you get to hear the awesome sound effect. <laughs> Nail biting. <laughs> of course, there's some randomness in when you get to sell stuff. Sometimes you'll sell one a turn, sometimes you'll sell two, sometimes you'll sell three. Uh, you never can quite tell. Debt 17. <laughs> Come on. Isn't this riveting? Come on, you've never seen content on YouTube this powerful. Just sell. Sell a little bit more. <laughs> Alright, we'll go to double speed. 16. 15. <laughs> I might have misjudged this. Did you hear that sound? There's like a bell and it switches over. Okay, so now this is going to keep selling. Look, now we've gone down to 12, you see? So the reason we set this uh, this stock quite high, relatively high, is so that we don't run out. We want to make sure that this gets all the way through before we run out. Now, um, it all seems very, very, you know, fine, doesn't it? Uh, this, is gonna, this is making us on average a daily profit of 158, which is not the same as selling one a day, far from it, but it's not bad. You know, 158 a day, um, and that probably, does that include, I'm not sure if that includes um, all the production costs, um, I can't quite work it out, but anyway, on average we're certainly going to be making money because we know that on each sale, we're making about 250 a day, but this is the daily profit averaged out over a month, and of course, at the same time, um, a competitor we're selling a load of this angina medication too so we're going to make some profit there too so this one line is actually kind of the, the sales combined between these two um, because as you'll remember we were actually struggling to sell all of our angina medication and that's why we've built up a bit of stock here um, now the great thing about splitting it is we're being able to take we're taking advantage of both of these demands both of them which are relatively small uh, there we go nice 102 there um, and look, the production's now falling as the production of this one starts to increase again. Um, and you, you, you hopefully, hopefully these two stock levels will kind of uh, mellow out. In fact, I think we do probably need to. <sighs> only selling half a day. We probably need to give a slight discount. Or you know, no, no, no. We don't need to do that. What we need to do is. Uh, what are we selling? We're not selling. Oh gosh. We're selling loads of this, and we're selling loads of this. We're selling hardly any of the hyperthyroidism. Okay, screw that. We're going to stop that line. That's crazy. Um, did we just get the chromatograph? No. 
Oh, more executive. Oh, we've got loads of executives. Okay. Let's put them all into cross promotion. Um... Oh my god, look at this bonus. There we go, we've maxed out our bonus. We're getting plus 36. We're not popping with the anti-malarial, it's fine. Um, and let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything. We're still getting the Kramada Graph. Yep, three months away. Uh, we're actually getting towards the end of this video. I wanted to show you internal transfers. Uh, we've got this... Ooh, let's get to these awareness campaigns. Okay. And then I'll show you a quick example of internal transfer to finish. That's fine. Okay, drop in demand for anaesthetics. Uh, ulcers, don't think we're going for that. Warts, not going for that. Oh, that's fine. How are they doing? Penny is still storming away. Uh, Jenny is doing okay. Um, but yeah, we, we are definitely, we're competing a lot with Penny. She's making a lot of the same stuff as us, which is quite hard, quite annoying. Um... You'll see that the profit here will actually drop a little bit as we're making more than we're selling. But then obviously we, we get a load back when we are um, selling more than we're making, you know, when, when, it, when it switches over. Uh, so these, these numbers will be a little bit out. But I think the main thing to remember is you can always look at this number here. This is the, the, the profit that you're going to make each sale. You know, the daily profit is all about uh, that, in, you know, that's, that's, that's over time. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about that in this circumstance. We're, no, this is, you know, we're making good money here. Um, and it doesn't take up quite as much room as... I mean, this, adding on the little angina bit, only takes up marginally more room than just a straight stroke one. So, you know, by adding this stock gate, we're, we're not really making this production line take up anymore, but we are managing to make a load of extra money from here. The other alternative would either be not to make stroke medication at all, only make half a stroke medication a turn, um, which would reduce the size of this production line a tinsy bit uh, but you know not much it would just be that you know we just have one less autoclave um, or we would have to reduce our prices and actually reducing prices uh, is a bit of a you know it's okay to do in tough times but you don't really want to do it uh, because that's just going to eat into your uh, margins massively um, and when, when you've got something that costs you know uh, 259 processing costs 500 and then we Huh. Cure rating minus 26. That's actually a little bug. The cure rating, that's a, that's a, that's a little bug from, from base game. Don't worry, that'll be fixed. Um, yeah. So in the base game, the cure rating directly affects the, uh, the, the, the combined value. But you actually see here that 498 plus 30 is 528. And so it's not actually affecting it there. It's, it's, it's not actually a bug in the gameplay. It's just affecting the, uh, the, the tooltip there. But basically, if we start to reduce that, if we reduce, give this a discount of like 10, we're going to knock 50 off of our profit per turn. Uh, whereas we might be better off actually just selling some angina medication instead. Um, and there's no guarantee that giving a 10% discount would allow us to sell one of these per turn anyway. Okay, uh, good, we've managed to do the the uh, standard. I'm not sure we're going to reach Expo, we don't have that much time, but who knows. Um, okay, I want to show you some internal transfer. So what funky stuff can we do with internal transfer? Um, let's have a little look. Um, uh, I mean, here's where it's really tight. I, I want to do something here. Well, I mean, ideally we want to start something and then finish it somewhere else. Uh, we're going to get the chromatograph soon. So what we could do is actually start a... Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We're going to make another hypertension-y style line. We might do a stock gate, but we'll have to do that after the second socket. Um, okay, so... A competitor has released a new product. Research complete. Is that our chromatograph? All right, wicked. Perfect timing. Um, should we get ultraviolet cura? Syringe is good. Hmm. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. Let's get ultraviolet cura. Assuming we you find something to use it for. Um. Right. We need to you get loads of these. Okay. And one more. 
Uh, that's treat angina, then we need to go to a double autoclave. The great thing about the bloodline is it's it's the one family which doesn't need a any mixing, any catalysts, but it does need some obviously some pretty high tech machines. Um, so this is my favourite way of doing autoclaves, where you do a it, it does seem to use less belts, I think, then maybe this look this looks bad, but it might not be as bad as it looks. Um but what you do is you, 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 you go, you cross your second input across the output of your first uh, and then you meet them up here and it just works beautifully. Um, and I'm an idiot because I didn't actually fulfill the concentration requirements first. I need to double agglomerator first. Uh, let's just say it's been a long day. I, I, um, I sent out press copies today. So there are currently pressy people playing this. Um, hopefully. <laughs> And it's not doesn't seem too buggy. I mean, I mean, what we've seen one very minor, um, what's it called, kind of display bug, but that's not really a bug. Um, and then we need to do our double autoclave. Oh no. Um, no, I don't think it's gonna work because I just need a tiny bit more room. This ah, oh, it's so frustrating. Never fear, internal transfer is here. So you choose the select sockets. Bear in mind, I did research this last get in the last episode, and then you get a little icon saying, "This is where would you like to input?" So we input in this empty socket, and we're going to output in this empty socket, and then listen to the funky sound effect. Oh yeah, that's brand new sounds, guys. No expense spared. Uh, if you hover over, you can click to disconnect it, or you obviously see where it goes from in two. There's no distance. Um... Oh dear, is that on what we're making? No. What, what, what did you patent? Combats liver disease, but with no side effects. Ah, oh, like she commands it. She, what, why did she put that in a... Hmm, she should have put that in a pill. There's no reason to put that in a... Um... <laughs> in a cream. Oh, she's already got the pill. She wanted both. She's mad. Okay, fine. Maybe she's doing some clever stuff where she... Uh, she might be doing some clever thing where she assigns... Um, in fact, let's just check if that is what she's doing. Is she assigning... Um, portfolio presentations. Yeah, clever thing. Look at this. Um, now... Huh. Oh no no there we go she's assigning portfolio uh, po 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 blah, blah, blah. portfolio presentations here and then she's getting the bonus on both of these which is actually worth doing right so because there's two products so she gets plus five percent on both of those that's actually pretty smart gosh clever penny um okay so then we can we do it here yeah we can there's no need to move that back And then we do that, okay. And then it will come through, we get to our stroke. Um, to upgrade this we need to go up to 14. So yeah, this is the one where I want to do a agglomerator and then we want to go double cryogenic. This time I think it's worth it because we're having to go a little bit further. Um, there is a really good way of doing these ones and I just can't remember what it is. It's like there. One is like that. And then, is there one like that? That doesn't quite look right. Or is it one like that and one like that? I think it's going to have to be that. It doesn't look that good. Um, let's actually start it here. And then go like that. And then we'll have to drag this all the way around back there. It's it's okay. We, we probably should have shunted this up a bit further, but it doesn't matter. We've done it now. Okay. That's at seven, 14. Now we need to do the triple chromatograph. Um, we're not so bold about saving sockets because this is a very big line. Um, so we'll go like this. Everyone's, I'm sure, familiar with this way of laying out chromatographs. It does seem to be the most efficient. Um... And this goes down to there. Let's just wait and see. Now to get it back up to that, we'll need another set. Let's just use chromatograph again, right? Because it's actually quite an efficient way of doing it. Um, New world event. Um, don't have quite enough room. Okay, 
go like here here yeah that's pretty good and then the final one we'll just have to kind of like poke out randomly so much steam um, and you know imagine that you didn't have these two free that we'd already used them we could use that internal socket to transfer someone out somewhere else um, and in fact I'm gonna do it anyway because it's fun so what we're gonna do is we're gonna link up here we're gonna link up here and then we're gonna send it out here and then you know, in this socket, <laughs> our competitor has completed a new pattern. We're going to. No, it's so stupid. Okay, we're gonna. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna have independently of our production line. We're gonna choose. Oh, uh, delivery. A competitor has released a new product. Uh, here. And independent of our thing, we're gonna choose what finisher we want to use here. So what we could do is obviously. Um, run it for an agglomerator and then maybe use a syringe maker later but what we're going to do for now is we're just going to have a creamer because there are some side effects and now that sells it now the thing is what we could do is later instead of deleting this we could have a syringe maker somewhere else uh, and we could make a small adapt adjustment here um, in fact somewhere else we might have three have syringe makers in fact probably what i'll end up doing have we got are we getting syringe makers no we went for the um oh we should have gone for this oh we don't even have that yet never mind um this is a great place to put syringe makers because it's not many sockets but needs loads of space it's you know three syringe makers in a row uh you could put in the middle here and then you could feed it in spread it across those and then export it and then anything you wanted at any time you could just connect up the sockets which is free and you can disconnect them at any time as many times as you like um and then turn it into a syringe and export it uh, and then you could use this little creamer for something else so the great one of the interesting uses of internal socket connections is as a way of uh, abstracting or there's a better word for it that people use in programming what is it again um, decoupling so it's a way of decoupling if you like your you know the the programming of your system uh, because we've all been there where you've got such a complicated production line and it takes so much effort to move everything around that you don't bother updating your old lines. Whereas I think this, you know, if you were very, very methodical about it, once you get to this stage and you actually have the... In fact, I should pause it because uh, in the next episode, we don't have much time, but we might try and get expert. Um, if you're very methodical and you use the internal socket connections cleverly, uh, you could make a really interesting kind of decoupled line, which... Um, yeah allows you to switch things you know so i think for example i think this would be a great product to use a syringe with later and if we have time to research it we might do that uh, whereas if we had kind of i don't know it's not a big deal but if we put the creamer here um i mean we could easily delete that and then send it out but the nice thing is we won't have to adjust this at all uh it's pretty cool all right i think i've probably prattled on long enough i hope you enjoyed this episode i certainly did um it was quite fun using the stock gates and the internal sockets for that very kind of high level kind of I don't know you know it's the very it's the most kind of complex sort of optimization you can do um, you know you've got the heavy-handed stuff which is just you know what lines you make choosing which products to produce and then you've got the next level which is the kind of marketing stuff you know assigning adjusting your uh, sales ratings to meet the demand and then finally you have interesting stuff you can do with the, the, the design of your production lines themselves uh, which will hopefully make them uh, easier to modify down the line and it, make it easier to react to changes in the market I played a game earlier today in fact it was really interesting I thought I was gonna win so easily and then just as I was about to kind of go for my killer move I had to supply loads of sickle cell anemia, anemia uh, medication and I was just waiting for the chromatograph to research and I was just about to go for my killer move to finish the game when suddenly uh, there was just suddenly loads of the, the AIs all released a load of products uh, in the same areas as I, where all of my profit was coming from and it just completely threw me and it was really expensive to redesign those production lines and make other things and if I designed stuff to be a little bit more flexible by having stock gates and stuff like that so that things would adjust depending on demand then I think I would have done a lot better all right. Thank you very much for watching, uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.